Hello, my name is Chris. I am the lead genius at South Shore BMW. I would like to congratulate you on your 430i coupe and welcome you to the BMW family. I would like to spend 20 to 30 minutes with you today taking a look at the inside of your new 4 Series, making sense of everything that we have going on inside here. I would also like to remind you, because you're watching this video, it is part of our YouTube channel. So when you're finished watching it, if you want to go right back into our channel, click at the top there where it says Playlist, scroll right down to where it says 4 Series Tutorial for 2021, and then out of all the videos on our site, any of those that are relevant to your vehicle will be conveniently listed right there in that playlist for you. Um, we know that customers now more than ever, they're looking for that on-demand product knowledge and support that they can safely and conveniently uh, get a hold at basically any time. And that is what we've done for you there. So please check that out. It's a great resource going forward. If you do have any questions about your vehicle, uh, chances are it is up there on our YouTube site. Essentially what I do is um, as I assist customers throughout the day, a week, month, whatever the case may be, I take all of those questions, very common questions that customers just like yourself may ask, and then that's how I know uh, the types of content and the types of videos to make. So uh, quite literally, it may be a question that you have uh, coming up and uh, take a look and uh, you could probably have a lot of answers uh, right there for you. So that is a great resource going forward. So getting started with your 4 Series tutorial today, uh, the first thing I wanna say inside of your initial delivery email that uh, was sent to you is uh, two options there. Actually, there was three options. Uh, the first one is your five minute essentials. That's getting you set up in the car in five minutes or less. Does a quick kind of crash course of the iDrive 7 system. Uh, allows you to sign into the BMW cloud in your vehicle, which then allows you to set up your memory functions and save that to your uh, BMW ID or your driver profile. Um, I highly recommend uh, watching that video first if you haven't already. Uh, it's not a bad thing to pause this right now, get out of this video, go watch the five minute essentials because uh, that is what you need to have done before continuing on with this video. Um, so if you take a look at that PDF, you have the five minute essentials, you have that full length tutorial, which is this one, which is right in the middle. And at the bottom, it's the iDrive 7 video series, which is kind of a, uh, a very in-depth look at the operating system in this car and how that works. And I will refer to that a little bit later in this video. But what we did is we broke this down to make a little bit more sense so you're not sitting here for two hours and uh, going crazy with that. So um, a little bit more manageable because there is a lot of content that needs to be delivered to you. And uh, we try to do that in a clear and concise manner so you have the best experience uh, possible. So please check out that five minute essentials video first. Um, otherwise, we're gonna continue on. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make the assumption that you're already signed in to the, um, the vehicle inside of your connected drive account. I'm going to also make the assumptions that your uh, memory seats and settings are all set up. Again, um, that is discussed in that first video. Um, so continuing on, on the side of the door here is going to be your one-touch automatic window controls. Because it is a coupe, we have uh, two controls for the driver's and passenger's window. Going up a little bit further, there is a little tab uh, closest to the speaker there. That is going to be the manual uh, control to fold in those side mirrors. Uh, they will automatically fold in when you lock if you have that setting all set up inside of the iDrive system. Uh, next one, this little tab here, you can move this left and right. That is to control which side of the mirrors you wanna work with. Let's say if you want to adjust the glass inside and that control is right above there uh, for you. Uh, memory settings from the uh, first video there, five in essentials. Uh, once everything is to your liking, you're just gonna simply press set and either one for the primary driver or two for the secondary driver. Please make sure that there's only one key in the vehicle when you go to make those settings and uh, then you should be good to go uh, from that point. Uh, moving up a little bit higher on the door is going to be our door lock. So lock and unlock is right there for you. As we, I know this is probably cut out just a little bit, but right under the left vent here is going to be our lighting controls. If you can uh, notice the one right in the center, uh, that is silver. And right in that is that green light, letting us know that, that that function is enabled. That's pretty much where you wanna keep it all the time. You wanna see that green light because the green light is letting you know that all of those uh, lighting um, 
options are pretty much preset for you. So there's very little that you need to worry about there. So we're gonna bring ourselves up here a little bit further. We're going to uh, take a look at the steering wheel. And what we're gonna do is gonna break this down because there's multiple components. We're gonna start at the back and work our way forward. So in the back, there are two stocks on the left and right side. Starting on the left side is things like our turn signal indicator. So if I one touch there, you can notice it will flash three times and then shut off. If I do find myself in a turning lane and I wanna keep that on just a little bit longer, you're gonna push up and you're gonna feel that click in. And that is going to be the thing to allow that to continue um, to, to be active. A uh, one touch down will deactivate that. Now on the very end of that stock, you're gonna have two options. At the very top, it says BC. At the very bottom, it looks like a little light and it has an A on it. So the top one, that stands for board computer. And we're gonna take a look at our live cockpit right in front of us, which is this right here. We're gonna take a look on the right side of that live cockpit. And you're gonna notice different types of content that I can toggle between. So as I tell customers, I would, um, I break down the live cockpit in three ways. Um, there's the left side, the center, and the right side. So the left side is going to be things like your speed. So those are fixed. We can't really control anything on that side. Right in the center, when the vehicle is on, you can have a simplified map. That's pretty much on or off. When you're navigating, you can have other options pop up like um, kind of your next turn-by-turn -turn navigation, if you will. That will be up there in addition to being up up on the um, head-up display if equipped. And of course, as you just saw on the left side there, I'm sorry, on the right side there is going to be uh, various content that you can control. And that is, um, that's your preference. Whatever you like to see as you drive, that is what you can have up there. If you leave it as it is right now, you're just gonna have uh, simply nothing over there. So that is what's gonna control that. If you wanna control any other aspect of the live cockpit, you do have to go inside of the iDrive system uh, under the settings, under the display settings and um, configure that as you need to. Uh, so moving down below the second button there, that is referring to your automatic uh, high beam function. So essentially driving at night, headlights are on, pressing that second button there, automatically it enables that um, that auto high beam function. So it's really cool as a car is coming at you, it will deactivate your high beams um, until that vehicle or light source passes and then it will turn back on again. So it just does that automatically. So that is a... Uh, that is very convenient there. Um, moving over to the right side is going to be things like your windshield wipers and all of that. You can notice right in there, it says auto. I'll move this down so you can see more. If I push it up one position, that's gonna light up green, letting me know that uh, the glass is now rain sensing. So depending on how fast you're driving, how hard it's raining, those uh, windshield wipers will increase and decrease uh, in speed as they need to. Um, there is a little control right in there. You can see fast at the top, slow at the bottom. This is adjusting the sensitivity of the auto function. So that's pretty much a lot of people kind of get hung up on that. They are not quite sure what that does. This is specifically controlling this. So it's a function of that auto system. So that's how that's going to work. Pulling this whole thing towards you is going to spray and it's going to clean uh, the front of the glass. So moving up uh, a little bit more, we do have our uh, paddle shifters. That is the silver uh, plus and minus there. Uh, that's a preference. You don't have to be driving with that. It is a coupe, it's sporty, even though that doesn't necessarily matter because that's on pretty much all of our models. Um, so it's a much more dynamic uh, driving experience. So if you wanna switch the gears manually, have fun with that, you certainly can do that. Uh, no need to be afraid of uh, you know moving into the wrong gear at the wrong time. This, uh, these cars today are very, very heavy with the electronics and the computer systems on board. So it's not going to allow you to do anything that's going to uh, damage the vehicle if you, if you don't really know exactly when the proper time is to be shifting and going into different gears. You don't have to worry uh, too much about that. So it is a fun experience for those that, um, that, that know how to do it and that can enjoy it. So that is uh, your preference there. Taking a look at the front of the uh, steering wheel here. So on the left side, we have our cruise control. On the right side, we have our entertainment. Right down in the center, we have our heated steering wheel, which is kind of an, a nice uh, modification there, adjustment uh, as it was on the side of the steering column with the previous generation four series. So taking a look at the cruise control, 
right in the center at the bottom, this is how we turn the system on. Once we've reached the speed we wanna go, we're gonna press set in the corner. If we break, we deactivate, and of course resume and cancel is right on top. Now there is a plus and the minus, a little toggle switch in the middle. You can increase and decrease the speed as you need to right there. You can use the accelerator in, in the brake down uh, at the floor if you wanna do that as well. It's your preference how you wanna get the speed up or get the speed down, uh, but that is one way of doing it. If you are gonna be using that toggle switch, one thing to keep in mind, one quick press up is going to increase your speed uh, by one mile per hour. Pressing and holding though is going to be increasing increasing in increments of five miles per hour at a time. So a uh, pretty cool system there. LIM, this is gonna be new for our new four series. Uh, a lot of our newer models are getting this now, especially in the United States. We haven't had this uh, before this new generation of uh, vehicles have um, been on in the market here. So what that is, is that is a speed limit uh, control. So it's a separate function of cruise control, but it's somewhat similar. So the best example that I can provide for that is imagine that you're on local roads, you're on the back roads, you are, let's say you don't want to exceed, you know, 45 miles per hour, 40 miles per hour, something like that. You're going to activate this, use that plus and minus uh, to set the speed where you want to go. And then once you do, it pretty much gives you resistance to prevent you from going beyond that speed. So essentially it is a system that keeps you in check, making sure that you do not exceed that speed. Now, a lot of customers have confused this for the speed warning that we've had in our vehicles for quite some time. And that is a system that provides a chime, an audible tone uh, to you when you are exceeding a certain speed, let's say on the highway, for example. Uh, this takes it to, it, it, we still have the speed warning, but this takes it to another level and physically uh, limits how fast you're, you're going. Now, if you do keep your foot uh, on the accelerator, it will eventually allow you to break through. I would say I've kind of done that over, let's say 30 seconds or so. You'd have to kind of really depress that and then it will let you take off. But um, that's that's pretty much the system there. A lot of our customers here in the United States don't really quite understand why we would need that. Um, so that's kind of the reason why they got the BMW is because you know they, they wanna drive and enjoy the vehicle and all that, uh, the acceleration, if you will, and, and everything that comes with that. So uh, that is your personal preference. If you wanna use that, uh, feel free to. Now there is um, another package available with this. This is the driving assistance professional package. That is uh, BMW's uh, kind of answer to their autonomy. It is technically uh, level 2.5 out of five, if you're familiar with that. If you do have that equipment, the arrangement of these controls will be a little bit different. They will be filled in here. Some placements will be different as well. We'll have these light bars above the left and right side. And right in this space, in the center of the live cockpit, you'll actually have a camera protruding out from your uh, screen there. Um, if you do have that equipment, uh, please check out under our playlist are the BMW, uh, I believe it's autonomous driving or autonomy. Um, there is a driving assistance prof um, professional video in there and there's an element of that video called Assist Plus actually showing unlimited hands-free driving on the highway. So something that I did there. So that's very cool. Um, it is very common in these videos because there's so much stuff we don't want to overwhelm customers that I will refer to other videos that we have on our YouTube channel that you should check out. But then again, all these videos that I mention in this here is going to be all in that single playlist uh, four series tutorial for 2021. So there's no need to write down or try to remember everything that I'm referring to in this video. Because again, if you just go right into the four series playlist for 2021, everything that I mentioned is already in there waiting for you. So um, if you do have that tech, please check that out because you do need to know how to use that. And it's a really cool system. Uh, moving over to um, the right side here is going to be our entertainment. So plus and minus at the top is going to be controlling the audio system for um, you know, the entire system. It's not just the radio, uh, it's navigation, it's the radio, it's pretty much any audible sounds or tones coming out of the speakers. It's controlling the entire system. Um, arrows left and right is going to go to the next playlist, next track. Microphone at the bottom, one touch there is going to bring up our intelligent personal assistant. You can see that it says hello there. Um, that is a, a very, very intuitive system. We do dive a little bit deeper into that with our iDrive 7 video series. Again, that is provided to you a direct link uh, inside of your initial PDF that we, that we emailed you. 
Also, the iDrive 7 video series is up on our YouTube site as well. So definitely check that out. Intelligent Personal Assistant is very, um, very, very intuitive, very smart. Uh, definitely kind of stepping into the future uh, with that uh, assistant there. Speak to the system as you'd speak to me, as you'd speak to a person sitting in the car. Um, it's, it's, it's beyond natural language recognition. It is really, really wanting you to have a, a normal conversation uh, with it. And uh, please do that because if you pause, if there's any breaks, if you're trying to, if you get a little nervous and you think that you have to say things a certain way, that's actually gonna make things worse. Um, but if you just speak to it, as you should speak to me, tell me you wanna go to Whole Foods, then say that the same way to the car. The car is gonna understand um, actually much, much better because it, it's expecting you just to have a conversation with it. And I know that's kind of crazy to sound, to hear, but uh, that, that that's where we are. So it's a uh, pretty crazy stuff. Right in the center is going to be controlling your uh, media options. So if you do have a head-up display, pressing that is going to bring up the list of possible options in your head-up display. I know you can't see that right now, but this vehicle does have a head-up display. So what I'm looking at when I look straight ahead is it says media radio, Sirius XM, FM, AM. And notice I'm using this kind of toggle switch to go up and down and what I'm doing as I'm scrolling through that. Now that content that I'm seeing on the head up display, that would be positioned down on the right side of the live cockpit if you didn't have that head up display. Uh, or if you choose not to use it and you shut it off, that's where it projects that information. So that's pretty, pretty. Um, it's a safety feature really because it keeps your eyes more focused on the road. So uh, brings up your major media content, pushing in will make any selection you need. So you really can control everything from here as well. You can obviously verbally say what you want, but you can do it here too, which I find sometimes to be easier. Phone in the corner. That is how we receive phone calls, also how we disconnect them. Um, if you press this and there is no active phone call happening, it will uh, bring up the list of recent uh, contacts and calls uh, that you have from your device, uh, assuming the device is connected. So that's how that will work there. So pretty cool, very intuitive stuff. Layout, placement of everything is as, as we would expect it to be. Um, so as, uh, as we redesign new models like we just have here for the 4 Series, a lot of uh, insight is taken from surveys from 4 Series customers for from the last generation. So we understand uh, what customers like, we understand what they want um, in addition to, and I think that this uh, new 4 Series is a nice representation of bringing all of that together. So uh, definitely done a really great job here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move uh, right to the center. Again, uh, this is called iDrive 7. We do have our iDrive 7 video series. Please check that out because there are so many different elements. If you can see on the side there, it says media, comm, nav, car, apps. We actually made individual videos for all of those elements because there's just so much stuff to talk about in there. And there's no way we uh, anticipated uh, keeping your attention for that long in this one video. So at your convenience, when you're ready to take the next level and learn more about the uh, software in your car, please check out the iDrive 7 video series. That is all there. Um, there has been some updates to areas like media and communication uh, for 2021. So please take to, please be mindful of the fact that we've had iDrive 7 since 2019, and there's been uh, some additions, some subtractions to the software. So if you are watching kind of um, the initial media and communication video that we had out there, some of those elements like seeing music collection and uh, other things in there, they're not gonna be there anymore. So just make sure that you're, you're looking at the most current one that says 2021 and you should be all set. Um, we're gonna move this just down just a little bit just so we can focus on the areas that we're gonna really focus on, which is kind of the physical hardware of the car today right here. Gonna start at the very top. That is going to be that green ring circling around a car. That is your intelligent safety equipment. So many other brands, you know, you kind of have to kind of dig around to find the settings, not with BMW. So one touch there, it's gonna bring you right into your intelligent safety. You just tap on configure individual and whatever you have uh, in your vehicle for that equipment is going to be listed right there. You can deactivate things, you can pull them back, you can do whatever you need to do for the settings. Uh, so at the top there, you have forward collision mitigation. This does two things. It looks for people and it looks for cars. So if a car stops short in front of you or if someone runs across in front of you, it's going to give you three different types of warnings depending on the variables that are unfolding. So you could first have 
um, you're going to have that visual warning and audible tone and then of course it's going to apply the brakes so not everyone is going to experience all three of those things um, again it just depends on the variables in that moment in time some customers just kind of see the visual they apply the brakes and they're good to go and you know they don't have to worry too much about it and that visual is a graphic of a red car or a red person in their head-up display if equipped or right in their um, live cockpit there um, so then again, if, if there's more, if there's a need, if the vehicle calculates there's a need to alert you to other things, it will show you, it will break. So it's a very, very intuitive system. Uh, moving down further is the lane departure warning. Um, this is also paired up with the steering intervention. You can deselect the steering intervention if you want to. So lane departure warning is a system that's going to work above 40 miles per hour. If you cross over the center lane or shoulder, it does give a vibration to the steering wheel. And of course, with that steering intervention there checked off, it not only vibrates this wheel, but it physically brings you back to the center of that lane. Um, I know a lot of uh, people can feel that as a little unsettling and they want a little bit more control. And that's certainly why you can uh, unselect that if you need to. Active blind spot detection. This one is going to work about 15 miles per hour. What you're gonna do is look in your side mirrors there. You should notice there's these little um, triangles. Those are going to light up orange if there is anyone in your blind spot. Uh, if you still don't see that and you try to move over there, those triangles will then begin to rapidly flash orange, just giving you a reminder of what's going on there. Um, and there should be a vibration in the wheel as well, just kind of letting you know that, hey, you know, probably not a good idea at this moment in time uh, to uh, be doing something like that. So that's what that refers to. That's what that's doing. So coming down a little bit further, we have all of our climate control options. I know some of this is cut out here, but it's actually not that much. It's just the heated uh, seat for the driver. So it looks just like this, but just on the other side. But then right here is our uh, front defrost, rear defrost. Then we're into auto. And so auto is going to basically take all the guesswork out of using the climate control system. It's going to automatically regulate where the airflow comes from, uh, what the temperature is going to be, what the fan speed is going to be. It pretty much just makes life that much easier for you, just like many other systems in this vehicle. So uh, customers who complain about having, you know, the windshield is fogging up, you know, things are not working right, they have to kind of do all, all the stuff. We kind of just say, you know, why bother that? Just use auto and um, you're going to be all set. So auto is a great thing to use. We highly recommend it. Arrows left and right here, we have um, moving up and down red and blue. That's going to increase the temperature. This is going to decrease the temperature as you'd expect. There's two of them, uh, there's two uh, controls because there's um, dual zone climate in the front here. So we have uh, this control for the driver, this one over there for the passenger, same control here for where that airflow is coming from. So if you don't want to use auto and I press this, you now see that graphic that, of that individual and you're gonna continue to press this until the arrow is pointing where you want things to come from. So if I just want it to come out by the floor, if I wanna bring this down and I wanna move it up, now, as you can see, I have complete control of the climate system. I'm now controlling the temperature. I'm controlling where that airflow is coming from and I can, am controlling the fan speed. And that's, that's, that's everything. Uh, if I press auto, notice it keeps the temperature where I left it, but it is now controlling where it's coming from and what that fan speed is going to be. And it shows me that because auto is there. Now, if you have noticed the live cockpit at the bottom, it's 20 degrees outside and it says AC. So why would I do that? That seems a little crazy. Well, you can have the AC on all year long. You're just gonna have a drier heat. That's all it's gonna do. So uh, some customers prefer to do that. You don't obviously have to do that. If you wanna deactivate that, you certainly can, but that is uh, just your preference there of whatever works best for you. Fan speed's gonna be right in the middle. It is one control for both sides. So I know in some vehicles like our five series, for example, you have two fan speeds uh, of options, just like you do for controlling where the airflow comes from in the two series, three series, and four series. That's just limited just to the one there. Uh, moving over to the passenger side, the little car there with kind of the graphic of a uh, little arrow, that is your uh, air recirculation. So your preference again, depending on if you want to have the air recirculated, have that fresh air being pulled out from uh, the outside. So that's how that will work. 
The menu in AC, that is a said menu to the climate control system. We actually do cover that in the iDrive 7 video series. So please check that out. So if you have questions, like when you press this here, this is how you get into uh, synchronizing both sides of the climate, the rules for the climate control. We have had many videos about this on our YouTube site, whether or not you wanna have the heated seats, the heated steering wheel automatically come on uh, when you have that preset temperature. Preconditioning ventilation, this is where you get into the remote engine start software. Um, this is how you initially activate that. If you did purchase the or lease the car from Celstra BMW, I go in there and already do this ahead of your delivery so that you don't have to kind of work, work around this and try to figure out where it is. So that should already be done for you. But uh, that's where you get into that. But that is the sub menu to the climate control system. So that is what that does. Max AC is going to be uh, reducing your... Um, Heat really goes down to 60, highest fan speed, really great for hot summer days, uh, best way of cooling down the interior. And of course you have the heated seat for the passenger. And how this works is uh, one touch there, notice that those activate at the highest level and it will deactivate one time each time you press it. Unlike other brands, it does not automatically pull back and reduce the heat. Uh, so like in a Mercedes, for example, if you turn the heat on the highest level, it'll be at the highest level for a couple minutes and then it will be at the second level. And then a little bit longer, it'll be at the first level. Um, and that's pretty much what it does. That does not happen in here. If you have it on level three, it's gonna stay on level three. Um, it does kind of cycle through the heat, so it doesn't kind of get too hot, but it does always keep you up there the entire time. Uh, coming down a little bit further is going to be entertainment. So this is pretty much very similar to what we discussed on the right side of the steering wheel here. So this is the control for the audio system, just like the plus and minus. One through eight is memory keys for the iDrive system. This is um, anything you want that you can have highlighted. So you can have, let's say, uh, let's see right here. Let's move this up so you can see a little bit better. So see how media here is highlighted. I can press and hold number one and save media there. So anytime I press one, media opens up. If you've noticed here in the center with the climate control, uh, they have removed the sync button. And sync is a pretty cool function because, you know, now I'm on 77 on the passenger side, I'm on 75 on my side, and I wanna synchronize the temperatures on both. So how do I do that? Well, seemingly I can't based off of the controls that I'm presented here. But what you can do is you can go under menu highlight synchronize and then save it to a number so you know anytime you press five for example you're synchronizing the climate so that is a really cool system there is that you can pretty much anything that you can have highlighted in this system here you can save as a preset down there some customers are remembering this system from when they saved radio stations down there, phone numbers. You can still do that, but the point that I wanna get across is you can do a lot more with it. So just keep that in mind. Arrows left and right is going to the next playlist, the next track, just like the arrows right on the steering wheel. And what you can almost see this, there's the mode right there. That is the same as the three lines. In fact, if you, you came out of an older BMW, likely you had a mode button right on this side. Those three lines replaces formally what we knew we, what we knew as mode, which is bringing up your major media options at the satellite radio, the AM, the FM. Uh, so that's how that would work. And the band is right at the bottom down there. And uh, that's pretty much everything there. If we move down a little bit further, in the back there, you have this rubber pad. Uh, that is an NFC pad. That is not a wireless charging pad. However, it could be a wireless charging pad. So in the four series, that is an additional option of getting wireless charging. It is not standard and it is not included in any package. That is a separate standalone option. We do have videos about that on our YouTube channel as well, kind of really diving deep and explaining to customers uh, what the difference of the technology is and how you know what you have. But essentially all you need to do is kind of look at the graphic right in the center. If you have a, like a little battery charging thing in the center of that device that's etched on the pad, that means you have wireless charging and likely there's a little blue light that's gonna illuminate when you put your phone on that pad. That means you have wireless charging. You of course could look at your window sticker as well. And if wireless charging is listed there, you obviously know that you have that, but please don't expect it just because you have the premium package or the executive package. That unfortunately does not really mean much of anything when it comes to wireless charging. Uh, that does mean you have the NFC technology. So you have a BMW digital key which is uh, provided with the vehicle, uses the NFC technology. So once that key is activated, 
all you need to do is simply take that card, tap it on your door handle to lock or unlock. If you're getting in the vehicle, you'd then take the card, place it on the pad, foot on the brake, press the start stop button, and you can, uh, you're can you good to go. That, that card key can replace your physical traditional key fobs if you choose so a lot of customers have been really enjoying this when they're going to the gym they're going to the beach they're trying to carry and travel light in the summer uh, they just carry the their card with them with their wallet and they're good to go so pretty cool there as well this technology has been extended to the iPhone, uh, Android device as well. As long as your device has the NFC technology built inside, it can work just like the NFC card uh, can work as well. Uh, so more on that on our YouTube site if you have more specific questions, but that is what that pad is for. Other than that, USB port is right there in, in the center of the cup holders. And uh, as we come down just a little bit further here to finish up, at the very top there, that is traction off. Uh, you do have the X-Drive all-wheel drive here, uh, is assuming that you have the X-Drive uh, badging on the back of the vehicle, so you should be good to go there. You don't really need to shut that off. If you have any sort of parking assistant packages on the vehicle, that would be a camera, and that area would be filled in there. Below that, the little P with the traffic cone, that is your park distance control sensors. We call them the PDC sensors. So uh, one touch there is going to bring up on the iDrive screen, it's going to show you here kind of uh, what's around you. So you can see the green, the yellow. If I got closer to the snow in front of me, it would then eventually turn red, just letting me know I'm getting closer to something and you'd have audible tones that get louder and faster with that as well. Any sort of parking assistant packages can also be pulled up by pressing this button there. I also recommend customers using that when they're going through a drive through a tight parking spot, car wash maybe, anything really where um, the sensors are gonna be picking up objects and it's going to be beeping at you over and over again. This can silence that for that one time and kind of give you that peace of mind. A off right below. That is the auto start stop override. So as it is right now, the system is enabled, meaning that anytime you come to a stop or you're gonna idle, it will shut the engine off to be more efficient. If you press it and you notice that little orange light comes on, now you just overrode that system, meaning that when you do come to a stop, it will continue to keep the engine running. Um, automatically, in, by default, when you are down in sport mode here, the engine will continue to run. It will not shut off. So you don't have to push this if you're gonna be in sport mode. It kind of does that for you. You will need to push this though if you're in comfort mode or eco pro mode because in those two modes, it will default to want to shut the engine off to be more efficient. If you are in an M440 and you're watching this video, uh, please keep in mind that you do not have this control there because you have a mile, mile hybrid system in your vehicle and a mile hybrid on any of our six cylinders now, we have eliminated the ability to shut that off. Uh, so uh, just keep that in mind as well. Uh, coming down a little bit further, we do have our driving modes to explain that a little bit more. We call that your driver experience control. So it does default to comfort mode. That is a balanced setting between sport and eco pro. When you do jump up to sport, you have more horsepower, more torque, uh, opens up both exhausts, just much more dynamic feel. Uh, when you fall back to Eco Pro, it's going to be much more efficient. So literally the opposite of what I just said. Uh, think of it as a longer road trip. It really does work too. And you know, the live cockpit changes, you have different uh, notifications and gauges and things like that. So it is a, it can be a very efficient vehicle if you choose to uh, use that technology. Uh, down a little bit further is going to be Auto Hold. That's what Auto H stands for. Um, when that is on and the green, I'd have to have the car on, but when this is on and the green light is on, essentially what that means is the brakes are held for you. So what I mean by that is you're driving along, you come to a stop, let's say it's heavy traffic, you f firmly put your foot on the brake, then you can release. And when this is on, you're gonna see in your live cockpit that uh, the brakes are gonna be held. You tap the accelerator, you can release, it keeps on going. So it's a really nice way of just kind of keeping the brakes held for you when you're in heavy traffic so you don't have to keep your foot on the brake the entire time. I know that might seem a little silly to certain people, but uh, try it because it really does work. And it's one of those little things that you just never think about. And uh, when you start to use it, you're reeling, you realize that, hey, you know, this, this is actually something that works really well. 
uh, right in the center here is going to be emergency brake, pull up to activate, push down to deactivate. Shifter is uh, right in the center there. There's an unlock button on the side there. Please make sure you push that in when you um, pull down for drive or push forward for reverse. That has to be uh, depressed in order to go here or here. Uh, park is on uh, the face right there. So one touch there puts you in park. This is your iDrive controller. This has pretty much been a hallmark of the iDrive system since the very beginning. But of course, um, iDrive 7 provides you with a touchscreen capability. You have the intelligent personal assistant by the voice there. There's so many ways of doing the same thing in this car, and that is um, by design. Um, it's, it's up to you how you want to do it. So you don't have to use this, but if you are familiar with it, and more comfortable with it, you certainly uh, can do that there as well. And I think that's pretty much it. As I look around the vehicle, that's pretty much um, a pretty good overview of uh, everything going on inside of your 430i Coupe. Um, if you uh, do have more questions, I do urge you uh, to take a look at our YouTube channel, go right under the playlist, go down to 4 Series Tutorial uh, for 2021. Anything that I've mentioned in this video is already going to be uh, waiting for you to be watched right there. Uh, please check that out. If you do have any questions about the vehicle going forward, uh, please know that inside of our service department, we do have a service genius there. Uh, pull right in any connectivity related questions that you can think of. Uh, they can help you out uh, very, very quick. It's kind of like a, a drive in, drive out sort of thing. Uh, very easy, uh, very knowledgeable, and they can assist you with any of your questions. Um, anything more with that, any more detailed, specific questions, uh, reach out to us and let us know. Uh, email your client advisor uh, or myself your questions, and uh, we'll be more than happy to assist you uh, with what we'll call that virtual encore is now what we're doing there with that. So uh, congratulations. Uh, welcome to the BMW family. Um, thank you for taking the time and watching this video and learning about your vehicle. And um, please uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can always stay up to date with our latest content. And please uh, stay healthy and safe out there.